Hey guys, it's Leah with Family Heritage Living. Um, I was thinking today and wanted to share this thought with you that very few of us know anyone personally that actually lives with no electricity. Uh, in a society, in a world today where technology is just booming and everyone is trying to get the latest and the greatest and, to, and of course all these technologies require electricity. So what is it like for a family that intentionally rejects electricity as much as possible in their life? Do they end up missing that electricity um, or specific things that come with it? And do they think that the life they have chosen outweighs what they're missing? Well, in this video, we're going to share with you our own personal experience. In today's world it would be impossible to totally turn away from any type of technology because it's it's just it is so intertwined in our lives and for our family we couldn't do what we do if we didn't have the internet and we didn't have computers um, we couldn't do what we do if we didn't have YouTube you know so <sighs> For everything, when, when a family like ours says, hey, you know what, life is better without technology, without electricity, we have to be careful because some people expect and they'll, they'll point out and say, well, hey, wait a minute, you aren't totally without these things, so how can you even say that? And that's, and that's a good point. I, th I think that's a fair question to be asked. But I liken it like this. You know, having a dessert every so often is enjoyable. And, and it's, it's also kind of, you know, it just, it's regenerating sometimes and it's just, it's a comfort food. But if you have dessert all the time, and we all know the ills of processed sugar, eventually that dessert can become deadly when it's overdone. So that's how we look at technology. A little bit is good, but in our lives, I mean, we can't, most houses today, you, you got things in homes, you have things in homes that I only ever thought would be in a Tom Swift book, all right? Um, I don't even know what half of these things are. I know them by name, um, but I wouldn't know them, how to use them or what their purpose is, other than when I, when I hear them by name and I realize that this has become a, a common thing for people. You know, you've got the smart cars, you've got the smart homes, you've got the smart phones. It's almost like we can't do anything without this stuff. So that's my point. Overkill is a bad thing for us rejection of electricity, of um, modern conveniences has been a lifelong thing for us. It has been building and building for years and we've been working our way towards that. You know, I don't think a lot of people who romanticize um, going off grid or going without electricity realize how everything is different. Um, you know, from the way you go to bed because your lighting is different to and when I'm talking about off-grid, I'm talking about without electricity, okay? We, you know, again, a lot, there's a lot of off-grid technology that still allows you the modern amenities um, or the way that you think that um, a modern home should be. In our case, we chose to go off-grid without electricity um, for many reasons. But it doesn't change the course that things are different. Uh, some things we never even thought about, uh, you know. Um, we have to haul our water from the community well, then we have to bring it home and then haul it from the drive to our cabin. Now, the cabin distance was our choice, but nonetheless, it's something we have to do. Then if we want hot water, we have to heat it. Then if we want, you know, whether it's for baths or for dishes or for hair washing or whatever. Um, bath time is definitely different than in a modern home uh, because of all these things. And, um, you know, we don't, we have a spring on our, or a creek on our property, so... Um, that's where our animal water comes from right now and that requires extra time. Um, our choices of not using modern technology is a personal choice and it's something that we desire to do that way. 
Um, however, we're not the only ones that desire that. And I think it's important that, I think it's been a, a, a shocker for us to realize the way that we choose to live, how much um, energy it does take, and it does take a lot. About the only modern amenity that we have in our home is our computers. Um, we, as you know, we, we run those through a small inverter generator and we also use our modem in there. Um, we don't have microwave, we don't have propane or electric stove, we don't have a refrigerator, we don't have uh, blenders and grinders. Um, I do have a juicer that I had gotten before we moved off grid and I have a smoothie maker. I do keep those, um, but when we run those, they can't be run here back at the property or at the cabin because it's not, uh, the generator is not strong enough to run those. So when I do want to use those, those have to be used up at the workshop. We do have the generator up at the workshop to run our saws for our work. So again, you know, technology can be a great thing. And just like a portable generator, that's a great thing for us. It's a great tool. As far as daily living, we find technology intrusive. And here, I just want to share some thoughts from um, each, each of the family members and what their thoughts are of it. All right, so an impromptu question here. Oh, boy. What is life like without electricity? Uh, what is life like without electricity? Dark. That can be, you know, it can be trying, it can be time consuming, but it's also awful. It's also, you know, peaceful. Um, What's the primary difference between, because we've lived both ways. We've had electricity, we've had partial electricity, and we've had no electricity. Well, you know, like, People assume that when you say you don't have electricity, that life is just so much more, uh, yes, relaxed. Well, and you know, I guess at times it is, but uh, oftentimes we find it's not near as convenient. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, huh, hence. Uh, yeah, like, like when you wash your hair, um, you got to be real careful when we turn, uh, when you turn the blow dryer on. How do we do that without electricity? We have that very small inverter generator, and we have to be very careful. And lots of times I don't use a blow dryer. And a lot of times you don't, correct, if we're in a hurry to So to that means I have here. to wash my hair to give it early Hours. enough to give it time to dry. And right, right. So, um, but it's, um, I find it enjoyable. Uh, it's hard. It is hard. I think it then that's hard. an honest, it's, 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 you know, people romanticize this life and it's... Well, they do, you know, and how everything is, um, all that in a bag of chips. Mm-hmm. And... Those that are romanticizing saw them live it. Um, we well, did, because we did. We romanticized well, this life. Yeah, yeah. We lived with minimal electricity in the, in the house to make it a little inconvenient in our house downstate but it was still convenient but we still if we needed something just plugged it in and you know, go out to the workshop and you know, flip a switch or or plug it in um, you know with the shop after we start the the big generator then it's not a big deal um, it's not a big deal to start the generator but you know to cut one board or you know drill one hole or or, or whatever, but it is a kind of a, a bother. So, is there something that you miss most about, you know, a modern life with electric? I mean, we haven't had a modern life in years, but without yeah. the electricity. That's kind of a hard question because um, I'll just say the speed that it takes to do things mm, without true. electricity is. Um, Dogging. It is. It, it takes a long time to get stuff done. Especially in the spirit of the society we live in now where everything's instant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been saying that for you know, 20 years right. that we, we live in a microwave age and it just you know, keeps it's getting basket. more and more. Yep. So is there something specifically, though, that you... Like, for me, I think the thing I miss the most is having a washing machine. Well, yeah, having the, having the, the washer, yeah. 
uh, you know. Not that you couldn't have one off grid, but with we're talking about off grid with no electricity. So. Well, and, and having one outside, you know, like having a, a wash house or a bath house or whatever would not be conducive up here because it'd be froze. Right, you have to heat another for, place. You know, six months. Right. So that, that wouldn't work. You know, we could get uh, the old ringer washer with a gasoline engine to run it and, you know, which You're people still do hauling and stuff. water and heating water. Yeah, and... so that's not real. <clears throat> but I, I think my thing is more of the workshop where yours is more of the, the, the cabin here, right. the, the washing machine or... Running water. Yeah, I guess maybe that's a, maybe it's a combination of running water because, you know, you, we pointed out that even if you have a washing machine, for us, we have to haul the water. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, you know, something like that up where we are, um, six months out of the year, it'd be froze if, if we had a... Uh, reservoir or, or you know, an above ground cistern or whatever um, it would be froze right and our cabin is not big enough to put it inside you know for to have a gravity fed water system which we could do that for you know a portion of the year but so here's another question for you do you think people with electricity are missing out on something Darkness. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's you know I, I think, you know I think we lose touch with we just lose touch. We have no idea. You know, people have for the majority, not not everybody. Um, they don't even know where their food comes from. Right. You know the Campbell's chicken noodle soup. They have no idea. Well, is there really even chicken in that? <laughs> chicken noodle soup? I don't soup? know. <laughs> but, you know, they, <clears throat> they don't have any idea where the, the food even comes from. So, you know, but what about, like, in their home? I mean, I, I know that equates into home life, but what about yeah. in just daily life outside of... <clears throat> um, well, there is, I, I think there is a, a, a peacefulness. There is a, a calmness. That most people don't experience. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, and there is with electricity too. I, you know, I, I get that. You know, it's. Um, I just think there is <clears throat> something, something different. I, exactly what it is, I guess I'm not sure. But you are the youngest Winans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you remember living in a house with electricity? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. I remember videos. You from remember videos from it. From it, yes. And we stayed down at Aunt Sherry's. You've been in a house with electricity. Like, mm -hmm. we stayed down at Aunt Sherry's for a while this past... And Granny's. And Granny's this past summer. Is there something that you like about a house with electricity? Can I tell you something I don't like? Sure. Blackouts. Oh, like if they lose... No, no, no. When the, when the power goes out. Right, yeah, because they when don't we have... We have to use water bottles to wash our hands. That's true. That's true. We don't have light. We have, you know, kerosene lights or anything. We have to, um, is there something that, be, and this is a hard question for you because this is the only life you've ever known, but is there something special you like about living without electricity? Um, power doesn't go off. Well, that's true. <laughs> Because there is no power. Because there is no power. That's true. So, all right. Thank you, sir. Okay, I just told your brother that. Okay, so for you, you lived in a house with electricity until you were six. Do you remember that? That's kind of a young age for, uh, for many. I, I remember I did, but I remember bits and pieces of it. You remember, I, I, say it again, you remember what? I remember bits and pieces and bits and, and pieces. pieces? <laughs> and, pizzas. Hey, and pizzas, pizzas, and pieces of living there, but I don't remember a whole lot. Okay, but you do remember this summer when we were down at Aunt Sherry's for a couple months in her house, which is totally on grid, right? Is there something special that you liked about that? Was it? Was there th new things that you felt, you know, when we, that you really hadn't experienced before? You were kind of... 
kind of had to fight the flushable toilet a little bit. <laughs> um, so. It wanted to battle me the first time I got there. It did. It did. And we, we didn't... Um, what about, like, the water in the refrigerator door? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> the, the ice coming out of the ice maker. I like the water. I like the ice. You did, yes. Okay. And Simeon had to get used to the stove that it, he couldn't figure out why it didn't heat the house. Why did the, the <laughs> cooking stove not <laughs> I don't think you'll tell me about that. Yeah, he wondered why when the stove, when we were done cooking, why he didn't have to worry about it being hot anymore and why it wasn't the heating source in the house. Such an inefficient design. <laughs> it really is. He was totally perfluxed on the situation. You gotta have so, you got you have something for cooking. You have a hot water heater to get your water hot. Oh, there's you the got, other thing. Why, why weren't we heating water up on the stove? A furnace. You got three things to do what this thing does. Right? One thing to do. Uh, RJ, uh, tell this about something that you like about modern houses. <gasps> yeah, what? you can make smoothies in the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the smoothie experience. Yes. Um, so you're old enough, obviously. You're going to be 29 this year. Um, we moved up here when you were 20. Were you 25? 26. 25. 25. You were 25. And you haven't been back down south since we moved up here. Is there something you miss about electrification? About an on-grid home? Convenience. Is there any specific convenience or just in general? I know um, you've talked before, like your father said, about doing one thing up at the shop and having to start the generator. Then doing it, <clears throat> shutting the generator down, going back to whatever we're working on and realizing I got to do two more things now. Um, it's just the little conveniences. So what, which lifestyle? That or this is your preference? This one. Wow, you paw, you hesitated. <laughs> you hesitated. <clears throat> um, and what about this lifestyle is your favorite thing, I guess? I prefer it being in the woods, off grid. Like they had said, uh, we're not talking about power going out. Yeah. No, it's not a big deal. I'm sure off the generator. We've had storms where we didn't know that the town had lost power. Yeah. <laughs> until we drove in to get gas or something. Um. She thinks that she's going to get to go for a ride. Well, and heavens to Betsy, I bet she does. Are you going to town today, oh, no, sister? She's not going to town. She's not going to town? You look, she looks like a seal. Well, pibbles are just land seals. Oh, that's true. Oh, poor thing. Is that better? Is that right. better? So. Anything that you've learned about this lifestyle that you weren't, that you weren't expecting? It takes a lot longer to do things. And it's not just off-grid. That's not the, the uh, appears the snow. Would we change anything? Oh, probably a few things. Would we want electricity? No, I don't see any of us wanting that. It's contrary to what we feel uh, directs our lives and, and gives um, energy and direction. All right, until next time, we'll talk soon. God bless.